Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am your host, Jeff Hootsell with AuditMax. Hey, you guys know Tech Talk is a show where we talk to leaders in the field of technology, talk about current events, talk about really all kinds of interesting things that, that these folks are doing. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is pizza. So we are happy to welcome Anthony Mejia. Anthony is the, leading the technology front at Pyology Pizzeria. Uh, Anthony, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I also right, love buddy. pizza. Yeah, let's dig in and talk about pizza a little bit. So first thing is a very yeah. controversial question that I want to talk to you about is, and you got to take your biology hat off maybe for just a second, is okay. favorite type of pizza? You got New York, you know, the Chicago, you got California pizza. I'm from St. So Louis. You, you went right there, actually huh? is a St. Louis style pizza, if anybody knows about that. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, so curious, what's your take on that? What do you, what's your pick? Um, I like portability, right? So sometimes you're on the move. So I like New York because you kind of can hold it like a taco a little bit. But to, the, to say that, though, I also love Chicago style pizza. There's some great food out there. And down the street from my house, we have probably the best Chicago style pizza I've had outside of Chicago. So you got to love them both, really. All right. That's very, it's a very political middle ground answer. I would expect nothing less. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went to I went to college long ago in Colorado and Rocky Mountain style uh, pizza is putting honey on your crust. And, uh, and so that also has a, a place in my heart. So I like them all. That's, yeah, it's interesting. I've never heard of Rocky Mountain style. That's, that's interesting. All right, I'll give it a try. We'll put some honey in there next time. So, well, so uh, talk to me a little bit. So you actually joined Pyology right in the throes of this stuff, right? In March of this year? Yes, so, I did. Fantastic timing to join a new organization, especially in the, <laughs> in the restaurant industry. Right? So talk about what yeah. that's been like over the course of the last you know, nine, ten months. Yeah, you know, uh, my, my first day on board uh, was kind of the day that they basically told us to go home. And so I'm coming in, kind of going through my orientation. It's middle of March. Uh, and in the middle of orientation, they're saying, oh, they're, you know, the, the president's speaking. Let's go in the other room and see what's going on. And, you know, we kind of basically went into a national shutdown. And they say they said, hey, you're going to go home. And we're thinking, you know, maybe one week, two weeks. And, uh, you know, 10, 10 months later, there are still many people in the organization who are working from home. And I think it's changed the game uh, forever. Uh, and so, uh, you know, for about seven months, I didn't meet any of my coworkers except for those people I met in those two or three hours that first day. It was all over Zoom and Teams and, and phone calls. Uh, and so it, it, an interesting uh, kickoff. But nonetheless, uh, the productivity has been great uh, because I think technology was ready for this. Yeah, I'm curious, what's that been like from just a pure leadership standpoint? So forget, you know, pizza and technology aside, but just from coming into an organization as a leader, um, and coming in again, not being able to form those bonds the way you typically typically do that, meeting in person and getting in a conference room or taking guys out to lunch and that kind of thing. What's what's that been like, and what's kind of your strategy or approach been uh, to kind of getting yourself into yeah. the culture of the organization? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm an extrovert, so for me, you know, being around people is a big deal. So COVID has definitely challenged my uh, my personality. Um, I have uh, one of the guys on my staff lives in Seattle. Another one uh, comes from San Diego, and a, a couple of them are local, so I get to see uh, two of them uh, mostly. But the other two, one of them I've never even met, uh, and the other guy I met on day one, and that's it. So uh, our relationships are purely uh, video and and phone, uh, and so uh, it's not the same. Uh, but you know, we're still being able to get everything that we want to get done, and that's the beauty of it, I think. Um, you know, I, I, I'd love to be in person with them. I think there's some uh, advantages, kind of those water cooler talks of passing by, overhearing another conversation and maybe interjecting something of your own that may be helpful to the conversation that you're not going to get when you're all remote. Uh, but there's, you know, there's pros and cons. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because you've had over, you know, 20 plus years in the, in the technology industry and in, certainly in the, in the food service and restaurant space, right? You worked with BJ's restaurants for a while. You were at Lazy Dog Restaurants, now Pyology. Um, how have you seen things change? I mean, in particular, I know this year has been kind of on fast forward as far as an adoption of technology and things like that. But when you look at the state of kind of the restaurant in industry, you know, especially in the lens of technology, what, what have been the biggest changes you've seen and kind of where do you see things going in the next year or so here? Yeah, I mean, you know, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, there was definitely kind of silos between departments, whether that be marketing, accounting, HR and technology, uh, because everyone was kind of operating on their own programs, doing their own things. Uh, and now we kind of need things to talk to one another, right? Maybe marketing's running uh, a promotion or maybe they have a loyalty program and they want analytics. And so there's got to be partnerships with everybody in the brand. 
Uh, and so really, you need to have a seat at the table to have that synergy to kind of talk to them and say, look, I know you want to do this. Let's make sure that that product that you want to bring in is right for the brand. It's scalable. It's long term sustainable and that it integrates with our other product lines and that we're able to get the data out of it so that it's not just a product that we use, but it's something that we can analyze and shift as business needs shift. Yeah, so you talk about the brand a little bit. I mean, is, is stores and restaurants are going through this this phase and this change, this kind of disruption. You know, I, I think there's a lot of focus on how do we change and reposition our brand or keep our brand message you know the same as it's always been, but embrace new technology. Again, what's your strategy to kind of go about that from a biology perspective? How do you adjust kind of your brand messaging and and how you serve your customers with everything that's happening? Yeah, I mean, pizza is kind of a its own. Uh, 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 brand, right? So you've got those people who want to come in, particularly at like a, a pyology st- type brand where you walk the line, uh, choose your toppings, choose your crusts, all those sorts of things. Uh, that's part of the experience to them, right? And so that's challenging in places like California, where maybe our restaurants still aren't open for in-person dining, or there are people who are just apprehensive to come out. And so really, there's been a shift from uh, focusing primarily on the walk-in customer to, to not only that, but also that remote customer who is going to maybe order digitally on their phone, or they stumble upon us on Google or Instagram or some other place, uh, and then and then wind up buying that food and either having it delivered or, or coming in for like a contactless uh, pickup or a curbside pickup experience. And so uh, we've really you know seen a shift in, a, in many of our customers uh, who still love the pizza, still love the brand, uh, but you know, want to get it in a safer, uh, safer way, and so they're just ordering it differently. Yeah. So, Anthony, I'm I'm curious, just from yourself as a leader, you start to look at and you're talking about your peers. You know, we have a lot of these conversations, and folks that watch the show are a lot of times in, in leadership of organizations. You know, they're trying to figure out, you know, how do we keep the culture of our company going when everyone's remote and we're not near each other? Um, how do we keep people excited about about being part of the company and the mission that we're on? Yeah. What's your approach? What advice would you give to others during kind of this time on how to keep those things alive and keep them moving as they're so essential and important in an organization? Totally. You know, we're we're still having as a brand, we're still having pizza parties where we all go on our own to get our pizza. And then we, you know, join a Teams or a Zoom meeting and kind of gather and talk to one another, uh, you know, kind of share our experiences of what's going on through COVID or maybe the holidays or what's up. And so we definitely are still kind of bonding and there's a great culture here at the brand. Uh, tomorrow, I've got to find an ugly Christmas sweater because we have a Zoom meeting with ugly Christmas sweaters. And so, you know, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to come in last. No highlights? You should have worn that in the show today. I guess you probably didn't want to give away the, uh, <laughs> the big reveal. Imagine what the conference. No, really exactly. Cool. Well, hey, um, I got time for one more question. I guess uh, my question to you would be, what advice would you give to somebody that's kind of young and starting up in their career in IT? Uh, maybe go back and talk to a young Anthony, you know, 10, 20 years ago uh, that's just trying to get up and get rolling. You know, what, what's the best piece of advice you would get or maybe somebody gave to you? Yeah, I mean, from from a technology perspective, I think, you know, it's constantly changing. So if your personality is to be averse to change and not have adaptability, throw that out the window. You can leave that at home if that's kind of how you are there. But when you're here, you need to be uh, you need you need to change with the times. You need to make sure that, hey, if this if this works today, it might not work tomorrow. We may need to throw that product out or, or, or tear it down and build it back up so that we've provided a better solution tomorrow. But, you know, always be on your heels, uh, always be ready to learn. Uh, I think technology in particular is an industry that since it's constantly changing, you're constantly learning. So it's never a dull day. Yeah, that's awesome. Anthony, great advice, buddy. Um, hey, it's it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. I think it's some great insights and things like that. So so thanks for coming out and chatting with us. I'm going to try some honey in my crust now. We'll give you a Rocky Mountain <laughs> style, of, style of test. Let's see how it goes. But Let's uh, catch but up on that so later. Thanks, us. Jeff. <laughs> you got no it. problem. Hey, and thank you guys for joining us as well for another Tech Talk. If you like this conversation with Anthony, you can find a whole library of our interviews at automax.com. Uh, you can also watch us or listen to it as a podcast and all your favorite places to find those. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.